Hi, everybody. I'm George. I work at DriveBit on the product side. Today is our authentication office hours. So we're going to talk about authentication in DriveBit, how to set it up. As you can see, I share my screen. This is invite only for the private pilot group that we have going on for authentication. We will obviously open it up. Uh, but for now, we wanted to really work with you all to uh, make the best feature we can around authentication. I'm going to do a couple of things today. And there are a couple of things I won't do. So I won't necessarily go into detail of how to authenticate your user with a specific backend, like with Xano or backendless or Firebase or that. We're probably going to do that another time because we know how important that is. And we're going to try to also provide code snippets for that to really help people that get started with their own backend. But for this office hour, what I'm going to focus on is the feature that actually enable it all. So we're going to talk about more like a core feature in DriveBit, which is called stored variable, which is new. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do it all from scratch. I'm going to create a new app. We're going to call it variables in DraftSpit. Uh, here we go. Start a blank app, and we're going to start building. I'm just going to go right, right ahead and tell you the, like, the TLDR, like the summary of everything we're going to do is if you go to project settings, you got two type of variables, a global variable and a stored variable. And essentially, a global variable is going to be, it's going to reset every time you reload the app. So if you, if a user, Load the app. If you were to change that variable and then close the app and open it up again, it will reset to whatever the default value is. That's different from stored variable. And that's the new feature we're releasing uh, right now is you can save a variable. It might be information about the user, like a user ID, might be preferences, like maybe the favorite color, whatever it is. And that variable is going to be, is going to persist throughout the sessions of that user. So you won't reset, you won't lose it, which is Essentially, that's what I mean. Like this is the feature that enable us to build auth authentication on top of it. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of like, how do you set it up? How do you read it? How do you write it? How do you change it? And hopefully that'll make the difference clear. Again, go to your project settings. There is this tab called global variable. For the demonstration, I'm just gonna call it global, just so it's very clear which type it is, but you can use it. You can use any variable name. So global, I'm going to use colors. It will be an easy example. So I want to save a global variable and the default value is going to be gray. And I'm going to do the same thing for stored variable so we can compare the two. And again, I can also name this one whatever I want, but to make it extra clear, I'll call this one stored. Uh, I'm also going to save it as um, the default value gray. All right, so now I've got my two variables. Here they are. I'm essentially done here. I don't have to come back here. And what I'm going to do is it started with a very simple stuff. I'm just going to display them. So I have a blank screen. Uh, I'm actually going to call it read because that's all I'm going to do. Just read those variable. Here we go. I'm going to put a text input. And like we have, I don't know <clears throat> if people are aware of, but we have this kind of cool new syntax to variable or any kind of like dynamic content inside text through those like double curly brackets. So if I say my global variable is, and then I can do the curly bracket and say global, here it is, it shows up automatically. And then I can do the same thing for my store variable. Oop, typo is double curly brackets stored. Let me type that, yeah, here we go. So it should, yeah, you can see the mapping between the variable name and the actual dynamic value. And here it is, even in edit mode, I can already see it being rendered. So my global variable, I'm just previewing it now in the builder, but my global variable is gray, my store variable is gray. So that's great, that's pretty straightforward. The real value is what happened when you change those. And so for that, we're gonna do a different screen. I'm gonna call it right. That's what we're gonna demonstrate. And we're gonna, use custom code, which is another one of our features uh, that we released last week to everybody. Maybe that would be an interesting demo for everybody who hasn't seen it yet. So we have this component called custom code and you can put it in your layer tree. And what it does is that if you then go to that custom button right there, you can add whatever component you want. In React Native, you can write it yourself and we'll put it on your app. And so the real value here is that we don't want you to be blocked by anything what do you use drop it so if you have this like great idea and and you know, for great components that we don't necessarily do support yet you can just build it yourself 
add it to the data tree and I'll show it there. What we're gonna do is just, we're gonna start by showing it because it'd be the most obvious thing. So we're gonna do a little button that says, oh, what's my global variable? And it's gonna use the color of the button is gonna actually be that variable, but to make it extra clear, we're gonna, when you click it, it's gonna show you, it's gonna tell you what the value is. So that should be it for global variable. So this is how we do custom component. You wrote it, save it, and then I do not save. Oh, I guess I already saved. Okay, cool. So now in my custom code component, I can go into that custom GSX input type and I can just say custom code and the name of the component, just like that. Now when I preview it, okay, great. So now I can see, this is my global variable example. I have my button, the color of my button is the default value that I set for that variable, which is gray. And when I click on it, I make it extra explicit that global, my global variable equal gray. All right, now let's change it. For that, I'm gonna add another button that's gonna be, that's gonna change it to red. So my title is gonna be just set that global variable to red. The color is gonna be red. And when I press it, I'm gonna use that kind of set variable, a function that I have here to set the global variable to that specific value. So that should be enough. That should be all I need. So the button should be red. And when I click on it, it should update it. So I'm still in preview mode, that's right. Yay, so I click global equal red. And when I did, my original button actually just turned red automatically because I changed that variable. So it was automatically updated everywhere. So now just to make it a little bit more fun, I'm just gonna add a couple of buttons, essentially doing the exact same thing, but for red, green, and blue. Okay, red, green, blue. And every time I change the color, it does change the global variable. Now it's blue. If I go to green, now it's green. So that works very well. Now, the interesting thing to notice, and that's the point of global variable, is if I essentially reload it, it will go back to gray. So it will reset. So it doesn't matter what I did before, how, what I wrote, what I set it at, it will go back to gray. So that's okay for some variables. I'm thinking of global variables typically for environment variables, like an API token to your Airtable API, for example. So things like that. But for everything that you want to persist, like a user ID, when you want to authenticate your user, that's not going to be enough because you don't want that variable to just go away. So that's what we're going to demonstrate here a little bit. Again, I set it up already here, stored. I call it stored, but you can create whatever you want. And I also defaulted it to gray. And so we're going to write another custom code component to do store variable. So this one is going to be my global one. I'm just renaming it so it's a little bit easier global variable and this one is going to be my store variable okay so now i'm going to actually make my life easier i'm just going to essentially copy paste global variable one and i'm going to use a similar uh, component for the stored one i just have to change a few things okay save that all done again coming here and i'm gonna tell it which custom component to use in this case, it's the stored variable component. So global variable, we already discussed stored variable, defaulted to gray, which was my original one. And then when I set it, so I'm gonna set the stored variable to red, it's been saved automatically and same thing for green and same thing for blue and the value is being stored. Now, the big difference I'm gonna demonstrate is if I set both variable to green, the global variable and the stored variable to green, uh, and I can check that they have been set properly. And then if I preview it again, which again is the equivalent of restarting my app, only the stored variable one was saved. The global one kind of reset and the stored one is now still green. This is essentially the core of the feature. You can now imagine how you can use stored variable to save like a user ID. You can save maybe the name or the location, any kind of preferences. So typically store variable are very helpful for anything around authentication as well as a better user experience, like remembering the preferences of uh, your user. This is it. This is how you're going to, if you do your authentication in Firebase, Bubble, Xano, Backendless, whatever you want, save the user ID in that stored variable. And that way you can continue providing auth for your user. All those examples, I'll share them in the community. We internally, we currently writing code to do the auth with Xano and Firebase. 
So if you give us a few days or a couple of weeks max, we should be able to provide you with a cut snippet. The bottom line is you should have everything you need from the core feature point of view to now do authentication yourself. All right, everybody. Thank you very much all for attending. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. The best place is in that community channel. Feel free to post the entire like, message. Don't be shy. It's only us. And we have a great customer support folks as well as engineers that are very responsive. Do not hesitate if you're blocked by anything. And we really want to help you move forward with that. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.